Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Depending on where you are in this world, God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. Today we are going to be in the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament in the King James Version of the Holy Bible. And we are going to be in chapter 19. And I want to remind you the power of God. Remember, I just read Psalm 18. Coals and fire were kindled from the breath of his nostrils. Oh, when he rode in to <laughs> rescue David. Oh, my goodness, his righteous with clean hands that keeps his commandments and his statutes. Hmm? All right, well, we're going to be in chapter 19. The burden or the oracle or prophecy of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. The earth is going to shake because we know that false idols have no life in them. They can't hear or see or feel or talk or walk, but they're going to be moved. And the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. And they shall fight one, every one against his brother. And every one against his neighbor. City against city and kingdom against kingdom. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof. And I will destroy the counsel thereof. And they shall seek to the idols or try to consult their idols and the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits or the mediums and to the wizards. And the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a cruel Lord, Lord, and a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. Now who is this fierce king? If we go to Ezekiel 29, 19, it's going to tell us. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will give the land of Egypt unto Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall take her multitude and take her spoil and take her prey. And it shall be the wages for his army. Remember when God used Nebuchadnezzar? Okay. And now he's going to reward Nebuchadnezzar. He's going to put Egypt in his hands. And the Egyptians will I give over the land, over into the hand of a cruel lord, and a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. And the water shall fail from the sea. And the rivers shall be wasted and dried up, and they shall turn the rivers far away, and the brooks of defense shall be emptied and dried up. The reeds and the flags or the bulrushes, the rushes, shall wither. He's going to dry out the land. There will be no water. The paper reeds by the brooks are the papyrus by the Nile River, by the mouth of the brooks, and everything sown by the brooks shall wither, be driven away, and be no more. The fishers also shall mourn, and all they that cast angle or hooks into the brooks shall lament, and they that spread nets upon the waters shall languish. Moreover, they that work in fine flax, and they that weave networks or uh, fine fabrics, shall be confounded. And they shall be broken in the purposes thereof, all that make sluices and ponds for fish. There's going to be no water to grow anything. Surely the princes of Zoan are fools. The counsel of the wise counselors of Pharaoh is become brutish. And this brutish is um, foolish. How say ye unto Pharaoh, I am the son of the wise 
the son of ancient kings. Where are they? Where are thy wise men? And let them tell thee now, and let them know what the Lord of hosts has proposed upon Egypt. The princes of Zoan are become fools. The princes of Nop are deceived. They have also seduced Egypt, even that that excuse me, even they that are the stay of the tribes thereof. Now this stay of the tribes means the cornerstone or main mainstay. The Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head or tail, branch or rush, rush may do. It's not going to be anything growing. They're not going to be able to make anything or do anything. In that day shall Egypt be like unto women, and it shall be afraid and fear, because the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, his hand is going to come over him, which he shaketh over him. He's going to wave his hand over him, <laughs> like a magic wand, except our Lord doesn't need magic. But he's going to wave his hand over him. And the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. Every one that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in him. Because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he hath determined against it. In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan and swear to the Lord of hosts. Because I turn them to him. And one shall be called the city of destruction. In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of the host in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors, Nebuchadnezzar and his armies coming. And he shall send them a savior and a great one, a mighty one, and he shall deliver them. And the Lord shall be known to Egypt, and the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day, and shall do sacrifice and oblation. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord and perform it. Not just speak with their mouth empty words. They mean it. Lord help us. And the Lord shall smite Egypt. He shall smite and heal it. Just like he, when he punishes Israel, you know, he tears them down. He takes them apart. He makes them come back to him. So here he's going, he shall smite and heal it. You know, he's going to turn back to them. And they shall return even to the Lord. And he shall be entreated of them and shall heal them. In that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria. And the Assyrian shall come into Egypt and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptian shall serve the Assyrians. In that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, mine inheritance now when it says assyria the work of my hands well this would be nebuchadnezzar and his army this is you know he says like go over there and do this and they go over there and they do that you know the lord can direct us if we're listening if we're tuned into him he will direct our paths and as always <laughs> you know i love you